12.7 is over conditional probabilities. Um, so the pro conditional probability of an event B is the probability that the event will occur given that an event A has already occurred. So they're in a, based on a condition that occurs so that A has already occurred. In addition to finding the probability of two or more dependent events, conditional probability can be used when additional information is known about an event. <clears throat> so suppose two dice are rolled and it is known that one of the dice shows a five. What is the probability that the sum of the numbers rolled is seven? Because one event rolling a five has already occurred, the sample space for the other event is reduced from 36 to 11 outcomes. So there are 36 possible ways to roll two die. But we're down to only these 11 outcomes because we already know that one of the die shows a five. Okay, so this example leads to the following formula, and you could go through and figure out the probability of that. But essentially the probability, and it's written this way, of B given A is the probability of A. So you look at what A is, and I always work from the bottom up on these, but you look at what the probability of A is or the events in A. So there's 11 of those outcomes that are down there. And then the probability of A and B, so of these, which of these have that sum of 7, so we have the fives and the twos. So two of those have that sum of seven and you'd get two out of 11 there. Okay, so the Venn diagram shows the sample space um, for both events. The probability of rolling a sum of seven on two dice given that one die shows a five is represented by the probability of the intersection of the two events. So roll the sum of seven would be all of these possibilities. Roll the five are all of these ones and these are all of the other ones that are there, okay? If event A is rolling a 5 and event B is rolling a sum of 7, then the probability of B given A is kind of like I showed you up there, and I just did it with the 2 and the 11 because the bottom number of 36 was the same each time. Okay. Now, another question that you're going to be asked in this, we can use this, is whether events are independent or not. So if you are looking at whether independent or not, okay, so independent or not, what you're going to look for is the probability, it doesn't matter which event you pick, but probability of A equal to the probability of A given um, B. So, um, and it doesn't matter again which event you do, but if I talked about the probability of A happening, so um, A is getting a 5 in this case, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, so the probability of A would be 11 out of 36. And the probability of A, given that B has already occurred, so we already know that we rolled a sum, in a sum of 7. Um, so we would have, um, given B has already occurred, so B is the sum of 7. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of those. And um, A occurring in that case, there would only be two possibilities. So are these equal to each other? No. And so therefore, these are not independent. Okay, then they would be dependent on each other, which should make sense because if you know one, then it changes the probability of the other. Okay, but that's the idea of that. Okay, so one example in here. A high school has a total of 1,700 students with 450 seniors. Of the 1,700 students, 1,550 are taking a math class, 280 of which are seniors. Now, this you have to be very careful and understand this. This is 280 of the math class. If a student is chosen at random, what is the probability that he or she is taking a math class given that the student is a senior? So it's so a probability of math given that they're a senior. So we want to find all of the seniors and do our probability out of that, and we want to do math seniors as our top number, okay? So we're going to look for this, and we're going to say, okay, of all of the seniors, 450 seniors, okay? And we want to do math seniors, which is going to be our 280 of them. So 280 of them, of the math students, are seniors, so that's our total math and senior there. Um, and we can divide that out, and 28 over 45 would be fine, or you can go to, it's about 62.2%. Okay, so that's what you would get there. So that's all I have for you um, for today. You've got some homework to do on that.